this video we want to look at rhinosporidiosis. So what are we looking at today? Rhinosporidiosis. Basically this is a topic which is coming under mycology, the study of fungi. So this rhinosporidiosis is what? It is a disease. It is a mycosis. It's a disease which is caused by fungus. Which is the fungus which causes it? The fungus is rhinosporidium seaberry. Sea berry. Rhinosporidium sea berry is the fungus which causes this, this disease rhinosporidiosis. This is a mycosis. <clears throat> it is a fungal disease. What type of fungal disease? It's a subcutaneous fungal disease. So guys, you know fungal diseases or mycosis, there are so many types of mycosis. You have superficial mycosis, you have subcutaneous mycosis, you have systemic mycosis, you have opportunistic mycosis. So many types of mycosis, right? Uh, what is the example for superficial mycosis? Dermatophytosis. Under subcutaneous, you have rhinosporidiosis. Now we are reading this one. So currently where we are, you have understood. The location you have understood, right? So what are the other subcutaneous mycosis that you know? Mycetoma, that is Madura foot, spirotrichosis, which is caused by spirothrix, right? <clears throat> so all these are subcutaneous mycosis. So we are today looking at rhinosporidiosis, which is a subcutaneous mycosis. It is caused by this fungus, rhinosporidium seaberry. Rhinosporidiosis, what exactly it is? It's a chronic granulomatous disease. It is characterized by large friable polyps. Polyps, remember this word. You should not forget this word, polyps. So it is characterized by large friable polyps. Okay? Large friable polyps. In the nose, in the nose, most common site is the nose. Some photos are there below. If you want, you can look at them because the photos are quite gross. So large friable polyps in the nose, most common site, conjunctiva, so from the eyes also they can come, in the ears, larynx, bronchus, genitalia, okay. So basically what is rhinosporidiosis? It is a chronic granulomatous disease characterized by large friable polyps in the nose, conjunctiva, ears, larynx, bronchus, genitalia. So can you see this definition? Rhinosporidiosis is a chronic granulomatous disease characterized by Large friable polyps in the nose, ear, conjunctiva, larynx, ear, bronchus, genitalia. Okay. So you have uh, understood where exactly we are, what exactly we are trying to do. So let us look at rhinosporidiosis, uh, the agent. Who is causing this? Rhinosporidium seaberry is the cause. It is a fungus. You know that it is a fungus. It is an aquatic fungus. It's a lower aquatic fungus. That is why what happens, they are not sure whether it is a protist or not. Some people say it is a fungus, some people believe it is a protist. So it is a lower fungus, okay. That is easy to remember. Somewhere it is between these two. It is a lower fungus. So how is it going so far? Did you understand what is the cause for rhinosporidiosis? Yes, it is rhinosporidium seaberry. Sea berry. What is it? It is a lower aquatic fungus. What is this disease, rhinosporidiosis? It is a chronic granulomatous disease characterized by large friable polyps in the nose, ear, conjunctiva, larynx, genitalia, bronchus. Very good. So let's move on. What is the source of uh, this infection? Stagnant water is the main source of infection. Especially people who take bath in stagnant water like ponds, uh, contaminated ponds and rivers will be prone to getting rhinosporidiosis. It's very common in Sri Lanka and India. In India, in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, why isn't it recognizing Tamil Nadu? Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Orissa, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, moving on. Distribution. So where in all uh, did we say distribution? Diagnosis. This is diagnosis. Okay, distribution is done. We saw Sri Lanka, India. Diagnosis, basically what you will do, you will take the polyp, take the uh, small part of it, the histopathology of the polyp. You will demonstrate spherules. This is a very important word. You will demonstrate what? The spherules, which are large sporangia, con which are... They, these are large sporangia, 350 micrometer size. They contain numerous endospores. Wow, they contain endospores. This endospores word you have heard in bacteria also, right? So they contain numerous endospores. So what will you demonstrate? Spherules. Spherules are nothing but sporangia which contain numerous endospores. Each of these endospores will be 
6 to 9 micrometer in size. The entire sporangia will be around 350 micrometer in size. And um, this is a photo that is actually HND stained, but it's best stained with Musi Carmine stain. They seem to like this Musi Carmine stain. This has not been cultivated yet. Rhinospori DM sea berry has not been cultivated yet. So you have to just stain it and look at it in the microscope and spot these spherules, which are nothing but the sporangia, which contain a lot of endospores. So diagnosis is clear guys. What will you write in diagnosis? In diagnosis, we will say that we will take the histopathology of this polyp and we will demonstrate the spherules which are nothing but the sporangia which contain numerous endospores. The best stain you can use it is Musi Carmine stain and it cannot be cultured. Musi Carmine stain. Okay. Treatment of rhinosporidiasis is dapsone. The first thing you have to actually do is remove the polyp. The radical surgery with cauterization is the mainstay of the treatment. Okay. The problem here is whatever you do, it is going to recur. Recurrence is very common with rhinosporidiosis. So these growths will come back. Okay. So guys, we are done with rhinosporidiosis. What did you look at in rhinosporidiosis? Shall we take a recap? Very good. So basically we are in this mycology topic, study of fungi. Rhinosporidiosis basically is subcutaneous mycosis. It is caused by Rhinosporidium seaberry, which is a fungi, which is a lower aquatic fungi. Some people think it is a protist. Rhinosporidiasis is a chronic granulomatous disease characterized by large friable polyps in the, low, in the nose, conjunctiva, in the ears, larynx, bronchus and genitalia. Uh, you know the classification of mycosis. So we are here in the subcutaneous mycosis, Rhinosporidiosis. Then... Rhinosporidiosis agent, the agent that causes rhinosporidiosis is rhinosporidium seaberry, which is a lower aquatic fungus. It is a taxonomical, uh, taxonomic status is controversial because some people think it is a hydrophilic protist, not just a protist here, so cl clear they are, they think it is a hydrophilic protist, water loving protist. So the source is stagnant water, uh, people who take bath uh, when they inhale, fungal spores are inhaled while taking bath. They are inhaled, Some fungal spores are inhaled, probably that's by the nose, right? They are uh, inhaled while taking bath in contaminated ponds and rivers. The spores are inhaled. What are inhaled? The spores are inhaled. It's very common to Sri Lanka and India, in India, Kerala, you can think of all the ponds there. Diagnosis is histopathology of the polyps uh, that you have to demonstrate the spherules which are large sporangia. What are spherules? They are large sporangia which contain what? They contain numerous endospores. It is best stained or it is better, it is stained better with Musi Carmine, okay, stain and it cannot be cultivated. Not yet, they have not yet cultivated it. Treatment is surgery. Cauterization is the mainstay of the treatment. Dapsone is effective. Recurrence is common. So that was about rhinosporidiosis. So if they ask you in the exam, you will be able to write a few points, right? Very good. Excellent. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.